I don't always play clean guitar, but when I do, I prefer to embellish chords as best I possibly can. Sorry, couldn't resist that, and I'm certainly not the most interesting man in the world. Far from it, in fact. Hurrah! Greetings, Nick with Sweetwater here, and in today's video we're going to be taking a quick look at a few simple ways to make a chord progression more interesting. Recently, one of my pupils in the Sweetwater Academy asked me to help him spice up a relatively simple chord progression that used four open chords. This one right here. bar progression you just heard goes C, A minor, D minor, and G, with each chord being played for one bar. To spice it up, we started throwing in a few simple hammer-ons within those chords, and also adding in a few sus2, sus4, and seventh chords, plus the occasional ninth note on the C major chord, and before long, we'd come up with what I just played at the very start of the video, namely this. <laughs> If you'd like to incorporate some of these ideas into your own playing, they're pretty darned easy to do. They must be. I can do them. So, let's break it down, shall we? One chord and one bar at a time. Incidentally, I'm not going to go heavy on the theory here because that's not how I discovered these little tricks. I learned some of them by listening to and watching other players very closely, and others via a good old-fashioned trial and error technique. And the rule I followed in the latter was a simple one. Give it a go, and if it sounded good, master it and keep it. And if it sounded bad, ditch it. Don't do it again. Like I said, simple. That said, I will very quickly explain why it worked at the very end of this video. Enough talking, though. Let's play. Here's what I did on the open C chord that starts the sequence. The first thing I did was this. I strummed the first three or four strings in the chord while doing a hammer-on from the open D string to the second fret with my middle finger, just like this. Once again. Not too difficult, right? I then hit the lower notes of the chord again before doing a full strum with my pinky fretting the D note at the third fret of the B string, like this. Just so you know, this chord is called C add 9, and you'll hear it in a lot of songs, often played instead of a simple C chord. Why? Because it sounds darn good, that's why. This, or this. I like the latter, but just don't overdo it. Anyway, if we put this together with the first thing I showed you, we've got this. Then what we do is this, we lift our pinky off and strum the regular old C chord twice more, but doing this on the final strum. Yup, we're doing another hammer on my friend, but this time with our first finger on the B string like this. So we lift our finger off said string just before we strum it, strum it and then hammer down. And that concludes C, so all together we've got this. Just so you know, while doing the first hammer-on while strumming the A, D, and G strings like this, the pre-hammer-on chord shape, the one with my middle finger off, this one, is called C sus2. And when doing the second hammer-on, this one here, the one with the hammer on the B string, the pre-hammer-on chord shape is called C major 7, this one here. And as you can hear, both play really nicely with a regular open C chord. Next up is bar two and our A minor chord, and I do this. I start off by fingering a chord and then picking the A and D strings followed by the G, B and high E strings together like this. Letting them all ring. I then strum the whole chord twice but add in the G note at the third fret on the high E string with my pinky like this for the first one of those strum. So the two strums are this. 
In case you don't know, the name of the chord shape when my pinky is threading that high G note is A minor seven. This one here. I personally love the sound of minor seventh chords as they're a little less sad sounding than a regular old minor chord. Here's an A minor chord. It just sounds plain sad to me. Whereas this, the A minor seven. That G gives it just a hint of hope. There's a little light at the end of the tunnel, if you will. For this reason, I like to lighten up minor chords with a minor seventh whenever I possibly can. So not this, but I'd love to do this. Anyway, if we put this together with the C part we just learnt, we have this for our first two chords, C and A minor. Next up is D minor, and what I do here is this. The first part pretty much mirrors what I just did with the A minor chord, namely this. I then once again finger our good old friend the G note on the high E string at the third fret with my pinky for the next drum like this. And then I lift it off for the next drum. That means that so far we've got this. But wait, we're not done. There's still one strum of this chord and it involves a first finger hammer on the high string, just like this. One more time, a little slower. This means altogether we have this for our D minor bar. Just so you know, the chord shape when my pinky is down, this one right here, that's called D sus four. This is a really cool chord that's neither major nor minor, so you can use it to spice up either one. Consequently, sus4 chords are used a lot, be it in pop or rock or even country. And for the hammer-on chord at the end, this one here, the pre-hammer-on chord shape is called D sus2, this one here, the one with my first finger off. And just like its sibling, D sus4, it's a really cool chord that's neither major nor minor, so once again you can use it to spice up either one. Hence the reason you hear it all the time. In fact, the late great Edward Van Halen's use of sus2 and sus4 chords was quite masterful. So, if I add D minor to our C and A minor passages, this is what we've got for our first three bars. And so that, my friend, just leaves us with one more bar, G. And what I did for that is as follows. As you can see, I'm fretting the G note at the third fret on the low E string with my ring finger, the B note at the second fret on the A string with my middle finger, and then the F note on the high E string with my first finger. The other three strings, D, G, and B, are all played open. The resulting chord is called G7 or G dominant seven. And I use this instead of a regular old G chord just because I think it sounds more interesting. I then finish with a simple walk up the A string to the final chord C, which is literally as simple as A, B, C. A, B, Sorry, once again, couldn't resist. So if we add that to the other three chords, we have the whole enchilada, and it is this. Now, there are obviously a lot more things I could have done to spice it up. For example, I could have mirrored the sus4, sus2 thing I did on the D minor bar and the A minor bar as well, just like this. That would have given us this for the first three bars. Kind of cool, but to my ears, a little bit samey, and I personally prefer the variants that A minor 7 threw in, this one here. The reason all these little sprinkles work so well from a music theory perspective? Well, to keep it simple, 
our C A minor D minor G chord progression is in the key of C major. And the C major scale is all the ivory notes on the piano, namely C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. None of those pesky sharps and flats. So this is C major. And so, not only do all the notes in the A minor, D minor, and G chords reside in the C major scale, but so do the notes in C sus 2, C add 9, C major 7, A minor 7, D sus 2, D sus 4, and G7. I rest my case. Anyway, music theory aside, I sincerely hope these ideas help you make some of your own chord progressions a little more interesting. And remember, sometimes less is more. Listen to the whole ensemble. Don't make your chord progression too fancy if it messes with your vocalist. Use your ears. That said, have fun with this. I'm out. See ya. Thanks a lot for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this and visit sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs. Thank you so very much, like I said, for watching. Au revoir. Thank you.